This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday! You guys, it's our last Tuesday in May. We're going to miss you girls over the break, but we have had so much fun being yes. with you. Yes, we have. Haven't these stories been incredible? They've been so encouraging, Jamie, and I am so thankful for the women who said yes. You guys can be praying. We're hoping mm -hmm. to do this again next year with four other stories. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Maybe the Lord's calling you to tell your story, right? So be thinking about this is my story season two. Absolutely. Season two. So fun. <laughs> it's so fun. We love Tuesdays. We love getting to be with you guys. And we are thankful you guys pour into us your mm -hmm. encouragement, your thank you cards. It means so much. Thank you. It's been a way to connect from this side of the camera to the other side. Right. right? And so we're just thankful for you. Thank you so much. Um, I would encourage you to think about one or two of your friends that have not participated with us and share these stories with them over the summer and then invite them to join us next year. And girls, remember, we're building up a digital library of right. women's studies that you can do without mm -hmm. any trouble. Right. If you'll just go either to the Facebook page or probably easier if you go to YouTube. Right. You can meet with some friends this summer and do any of the Bible studies that you've missed. Right. And Over Dawn's again. so great. I mean, she's so great. She even puts them in playlists for you. So I'm just telling you. Dawn is wonderful. Shout the out. The reason we, we are you. as sharp as we are is because of other people. <laughs> as, always. <laughs> always. But, um, okay. So Jamie, I, I have an engaging question for you. Okay. Let me take a deep breath. <laughs> all right. It's summer. Yes. I mean, for all intended purposes, it's yes. summer. Like, what's one of your favorite things about the summer season that you get to oh, do? Oh, thanks. That's a great question. She threw me a softball this time, girls. <laughs> I, I love the, the pace of summer. Mm. I love yes. things like watermelon oh. with your family just hanging out, eating that. Yeah. I love um, going on little trips to get away, mm -hmm. especially if you're going somewhere cool and getting yeah. away from the Texas heat. Yeah. What about y'all? Yeah. What's your favorite summer activity or what is summer? Like what, when it's summer, what are you most excited about? Yeah. You said what something springs that, to your mind that um, made me think it's kind of funny. You know, I'm an identical twin. Yes. I love watermelon. She hates it. Like I, how is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. It's the same DNA, That's right? So like I, funny. Anyhow, um, I love watermelon too. Okay. I do. We got a date. There you go. In the summer. Right. Yes. Um, but I will say I loved what you said about pace of life in the summer because mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking. The evenings seem to be longer, oh, right? Know. It's lighter, mm -hmm. longer, so the mm -hmm. evening time just seems to be stretched, yeah. and you're not as in a hurry as sometimes right. we get in during the school year, um, especially as women, I think. But enjoy your summer. Enjoy your summer. I will. I'll do my best. I feel like a lot of women didn't have a summer last year because we were just still trying to figure out what life looked like in the pandemic. Right. So I'm super excited about this summer because I think we are going to have that feeling mm -hmm. of life slowing down and, you know, just enjoying the things about right. the season. Right. So, yeah. I think this summer maybe we'll hold on to that slower pace, mm. but we won't I have so. some of the anxiety that we felt last year. Right. You know, yeah. I think we've learned to trust the Lord to take care of us. That's more. right. Oh, that's such a great segue of trusting the Lord, <laughs> learning to trust Him. Jamie, I'm so excited for you to share your story with our women. Well, it's a privilege to. Um, mm. yeah. I, Thanks I for just, saying yes. Yeah, I don't think I had a choice, but <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, it's for for most of us, it's easier to hear other people's stories than it is for us to share our story, right? right? right. So let's just start. Let's just start easy. 
tell us about Jamie as a little girl. How, okay. What was it like in okay. your home growing up? And then we want to know what's life like now. Okay. Well, good. Well, I grow, grew up in a home where I was the oldest of three kids. And um, we, mom and dad took us to church mm-hmm. every week. Um, we knew church was important. We knew God was important. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, my family was pretty private oh. about faith. You yeah. know, we didn't talk about God a lot mm. uh, at home. Mm. And um, so I can't, it was not natural to me okay. to begin talking about my spiritual life with yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I always knew that he was the most important mm. thing, is what I would have said at that time. Thing, yeah. not person, probably. Right. But, um, I did most of my growing up in San Antonio Mm -hmm. and went to college at ACU, which is where my parents and my grandfather had gone to college. Oh, wow. That's so that is a precious legacy. It was. Yeah. Out in West Texas in Abilene Mm -hmm. Um, and grew up, went to college there, met Rick there. Mm -hmm. He was already um, he was a senior when I was a freshman. Okay, I was going to ask you what the age difference was. Yeah. And so by the time we started dating, he had graduated and was doing graduate work, but he was also a preacher. Wow. So I dated a preacher, which is very bizarre. Can we pause for a second? Will you tell everyone about the phone call I got um, about Sandy O'Dell? Sandy, if you're watching, shout out to you. Precious Sandy. Yes, Sandy was Rick's administrative assistant. When Uh, he was single. Right. And a 21 year old preacher. And uh, I think she pretty much raised him for about three years. She told me she did. did She (laughs) called to make sure we had her email address right. And she said, I pretty much raised Rick, actually. And I said, I believe that. I I owe a lot to the women of Southern Hills. (laughs) I'll just say that. (laughs) Thanks, Sandy. (laughs) He turned out great. He did. I'm going to keep him. But um, anyway, we got married as soon as I graduated from college. Okay. So that was 1981. So June 6th, 1981. D-Day, we will celebrate our 40th anniversary. That's incredible. It really is. And you know how we did it? How? One day at a time. That, that, that's it. One day at a time. Yeah. But that is to be celebrated, Jamie, because marriage is not easy. It is it is very hard. And we're learning how God is working on our hearts. Yes. You know, I didn't think I was selfish until I got married. <laughs> well, I thought I was always right till I got married. <laughs> 40 years of marriage is something to be celebrated and something to just champion for, right? It really is. And yeah. the thing is, it yes, it's hard. We say that a lot. But yeah. It is so rewarding. It's it's also very sweet. It is. And I just, I think of the ways that Rick has changed me Mm -hmm. over the years and the way I've grown Mm -hmm. um, under his teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I think about the children Mm -hmm. in our home Mm -hmm. uh, who are not in our home anymore because they're grown. But it's so sweet Mm -hmm. to have that. to just look back on a life that where people love the Lord mm, right. enough to stick it out in the hard times and know to thank Him yeah, in the absolutely. sweet times. I mean, what's life for you guys now in year 40 of marriage? What's well, it like? Year 40? Well, it's been kind of weird with the pandemic sure. and everything, but um, we are so, we're excited about the future. Mm-hmm. And, um, the kids are launched. You know, you were talking about your kids being emerging adults. Right. Our kids are launched They've adults. They've graduated. And we are so <laughs> thrilled about that. That's awesome. Um, we're, we're really enjoying celebrating mm-hmm. their lives. Yeah. So. Well, well, tell us a little bit about your relationship with God. Like, where did it start? Where okay. do you remember it starting? And kind of okay. walk us through. Well, um, as I said, I grew up knowing God was very important. Mm-hmm. We went to church every week. Um, I had believing parents and I had believing grandparents. So I got baptized when I was 11 years Mm. old. Mm. And um, I... Who baptized you? Do you remember? The preacher at our church. Okay. I just was curious. Like, that's an interesting question, I think. It is. Yeah. The preacher at our church. And, you know, I'm embarrassed. We... I don't don't know his name. I was... That's okay. But 
anyway, and I don't remember ever having a time, I think you said this too, that I didn't believe in God, but Mm -hmm. um, somehow, and I I don't know that it was what people said to me, I think it was just what I heard, Mm -hmm. somehow I didn't understand really that God wanted a relationship with me. Right. I, I remember sitting in Bible class and hearing the story after story mm. after story of um, people who either disobeyed God right. and their lives turned out poorly mm. or people who obeyed God and their lives turned out well. They didn't have to suffer the consequences of sin. So there was know? an equation in your mind. In my mind, you know, I was an accountant, you know, <laughs> as an adult, as a young adult, uh, a plus B equals C, right. you know, obeying God mm. plus, I don't know, God's power, I guess, yeah. equals uh, an easy life is hot. No. Mm. Wow. That's, that's not what I would have said, but that's what I would have meant. Right. You right. Know? And um, so I really didn't know much about God's love. Mm. I knew that he did love people. Right. When they were good. Right. But I didn't really have an understanding at all Mm -hmm. of God's overwhelming commitment to love Mm -hmm. each person. Yeah. And that it didn't depend on our performance. It depends on his character. That's right. And his character doesn't change. Mm -hmm. That's right. So as as I tell the story today, you're going to hear me talk about some attitudes that I have and Mm -hmm. some some ideas I had that I don't believe are true right today right but that's where i was that's where you were and i think that's important i think that's the idea of looking back in our stories Mm -hmm. and seeing god's faithfulness because even in that moment of having maybe an idea that doesn't look like his or a way that doesn't look like his and he still invites us to become more and more like him that's right as long as we'll just keep saying Mm -hmm. yes to him as he asks us to take the next yeah. The next step. Right. That's hard to say. Next step. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, as we, if we'll just keep saying yes to him, yes. then he'll just keep mm-hmm. leading us along mm-hmm. yeah. and revealing more and more of himself That's to right. us. As You're going to find the longer that you walk with the Lord, he continues to <laughs> present a next step. I know. But he also continues to say, will you lay this down for me? <laughs> like, yeah, he, he does. will. He, he will. Does. I had a teenager once ask me, you know, I just don't see once you're married, I mean, how, why do you, I mean, why would you ever need to sin? You know, again, and I was like, hmm, well, <laughs> let's revisit that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's just, the Lord just keeps revealing more and more and more uh-huh. of yeah. um, who he is. Right. Which is always an invitation right. for you to move toward, toward him, him, joining him, yeah, you know. He's always there. And he's for the rest of our lives on earth. And I don't know, I wonder if maybe he'll do it in heaven too. Mm-hmm. If if we'll just keep saying, turning more and more into his image. Yeah. That's what I hope. Oh, I hope so too. That's a beautiful thought. That's a beautiful thought. Jamie, tell us how God entered your story. Well. Or a time when you recognize, looking back, you're like, yeah, God I, was. Yeah. It's in hard it. when you've li- lived with the Lord this long on the journey with the Lord, this song. Um, It's hard to condense a lifetime. So I'm picking out one, one story. Absolutely. And, um, and it's, I picked it because it was the first wilderness experience that I had Mm. as an adult. Mm, That'll be good. And so, and it, it changed everything after that. Yeah. Um, As I said, I knew in in my childish mind, which mm. even after we were married, I still was a pretty childish person, um, that God wanted me to be good, mm. which in my mind meant following right. rules. And they weren't always rules from Scripture. Mm. They were just rules from my religious culture. Oh, wow. Right. And if you followed these rules, then there would be a good life on the other side, That's right? That's right. Life would work out for okay. you and you'd get heaven to boot. So mm-hmm. that was a big, that was a big bonus, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm thankful 
for the church that I had because they um, they gave me a high value of scripture. Mm-hmm. They they knew it was important for us to know yeah. the Bible because that's God's revelation to us. Right. And I still believe that. Yeah. What I didn't understand was that I was looking at the Bible more as a guide on issues mm. than I was as a revealing of God's character in his heart oh, and what good. he has done to pursue us, yeah. what he's offering to us. I think a lot of us start in that place, right? Like we're going to God's word on how do I do this? How do I do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we're missing the relationship. Right. right, right, exactly. But that happens to so many of us, Jamie, I think. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, the fact that they valued Scripture mm-hmm. so much is what drove me to dive into the Word of right. God. And that's, awesome. that's that gave the Holy Spirit the opportunity mm-hmm. to start teaching me yeah. that there's more here than a list of do's and don'ts. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so I started off with this immature and incorrect view of mm-hmm. God— and part of this story is the is a very dramatic time when he jumped me into a more of a relationship with him mm-hmm. mode. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about that wilderness time. Okay. Um, after Rick and I had been married a couple of years, we we felt like we were ready for the next step yeah. in marriage, and we were we. Um, we said earlier we were at the Southern Hills Church of Christ. Well, at that time there were so many young couples there. Right. They were there were college kids, mm-hmm. there were older people, there were a ton of young married couples yeah. who had been married about the same time we had. Mm-hmm. And they all we all decided it was time to have babies. Right. At the about the same time, yeah. you know. And so Every week, you know, Sunday school class or, uh, you know, church or community group mm-hmm. afterward, you know, somebody was always announcing, well, you know, guess what? something we're exciting to share. Yeah, we're right. expecting, you know, and truthfully, for both Rick and me, life had gone along pretty well mm. up until this point. Right. Nothing in our experience had challenged that equation um, I was talking about. That's you a know. good way to put it. Yeah. Nothing challenged the equation. Right. Yeah. So, um, so we totally expected that yeah. it wouldn't be long until we were making our announcement. Mm-hmm. But months started going past mm-hmm. and it wasn't happening. Yeah. And, um, started going to see the doctor in town Mm -hmm. and he couldn't find anything wrong. Months kept going. Mm -hmm. He said, well, let's start you on some fertility drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, months Mm -hmm. kept going by every month, you know, was just a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And suddenly my equation didn't work. So how are you feeling about God in that moment? Well, my first reaction was (sighs) obviously, I haven't been good enough. And so I started thinking, what is it that I'm being punished for? Mm. And I'd just go back in my past. Oh, Lord, I just beat myself up. You know, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I remember I did this, you know, Mm. and I please forgive me for that. You know, and not knowing I was already forgiven, you know, that that Jesus blood had covered Mm -hmm. all of that Mm -hmm. and would continue to cover everything. Um, and finally, you know, it. I just was like, well, I don't, I don't even know. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry for, you yeah. know, why, why is this not working, you know? And then I started thinking, well, maybe there's more I need to be doing, you mm. know. And it just, it, nothing seemed to be working, working right. along the lines of my equation. Yeah, I couldn't get it to work out. I know. I mean, I just thought I'm, I'm trying to do well at, you know, at this, I'm trying to do well at that. I'm trying to be a good wife. I'm, you know, I, I, in fact, I even married a preacher. Come on now, you know, I mean, (laughs) let me remind you guys. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, start suddenly I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm doing my part. Mm -hmm. What, 
what's up with you? Mm. And, uh, you know, I'm not proud of it. Yeah. But I did. I started getting angry with God. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on Mm -hmm. here? And every week there was the reminder that other people were having this happen. You know, I'd be at the doctor's office right. with another failed pregnancy test, you know, because mm-hmm. you didn't really have early pregnancy at home, you yeah. know. And um, and the person behind me would be going, thank, and she'd use the Lord's name in vain, thank blank that I mm-hmm. am not pregnant. I, I just couldn't have stood that, you uh, know. Yeah. And I just remember making contact with the secretary's eyes, you know, mm-hmm. and she's like, in her, I could see in her eyes, I'm sorry, this is hard. You, you know, know what, Jamie, that's such a good reminder. We have no idea what other people's stories are. It's true, yeah. And things that you are dreading may be the very thing, thing that, that someone else is clinging to hope for. Right, right, um, right. So you're just mad. You're just angry. Yes, yes. And um, it finally culminated. It was probably a, it was a, probably a couple of years into the process, mm, you know. Years. Years, yes. And um, I just remember I had read the book of Job, you mm-hmm. know, because I thought a lot of really bad things happened to Job and he right. was faithful. Right. So I'm going to read this and I'll figure out what you what I need to do, mm-hmm. you know. Well, I was reading through it and, you know, the very beginning, God allows Satan to take mm-hmm. everything of meaning yeah. away from Job. Mm-hmm. God doesn't do it, but he doesn't stop Satan. You right. Know? And then um, he he has friends that are religious people yes. who come and try to explain what's going on to Job. You uh-huh. know? And I'd be sitting there like, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah, I, that makes sense to me. You know, and then, <laughs> then at the end of the book, you know, God, God shows up uh-huh. and he goes, you two, you two, you three need to stop talking. <laughs> you know, you're not saying what's right about me. And I was like, really? Yeah. It sounded pretty good to me. Yeah. You know, it sounded oh, like it was making okay, sense. Okay, you know, and then, and then he talks to Job, mm-hmm. you know, because Job is mad at him. Right. He's saying, you, I need a court day with you. I need somebody. Mm-hmm. I need some justice here, yeah. you know. Yep. And God comes to him and he says, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And he starts talking. He doesn't answer the whys. Yeah. He just starts talking about who he is. Who he who is. God yeah. is. Mm-hmm. And he says, and he never explains anything. Yeah. But Job is confronted with who God is. Mm. And he's like, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So how did Job's, you know, oh. um, reaction or just to that like how does that like parallel with what was going on in your heart and in your mind well it it gave me a new way of thinking and I wasn't quite ready then to switch over to it but it gave me a new paradigm a new worldview there Mm. to say you mean God doesn't have to explain life right that equation doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And mm. I remember one day when I, I was really heartbroken, just at the bottom, mm. and going in to the spare bedroom. I think, I think Rick had maybe put me in timeout <laughs> <laughs> or asked me to go. He didn't put me there, but he probably said, I think you need, you need a to timeout. Spend some time. Yes, yeah. you know, and just saying, Lord, I don't understand. Mm. What's wrong with what I want? You know, it's not, I don't want something. I don't want money. I don't want, you know. Am I asking for too much here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you could do this. Mm. It would be easy for you. And just, you've got to help me understand this because I don't know how life works anymore. Yeah. And um, if my equation doesn't work. If my equation doesn't work. Then I don't know how life works. Yes, yes. Yeah. And God was so gentle and kind. Mm. Um, I, I didn't have words for this at the time. I had a vocabulary for this. But the Holy Spirit mm. was just gently would push back. I would, I would make some accusation, you know, and he'd go, did I really promise that? Mm. Mm. Well, no, you, no, you didn't, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, but, but I just think I deserve, do you? Mm. So gentle. You know? 
Gentle, but gentle, firm. but firm. Yeah. No shame. Mm. No shame at all. Mm-hmm. But just pushing back, you know. If if I never gave you a child, mm. would it be would, would I still be good? Yeah. Yeah, Jamie, and I think we have to wrestle with do we want the gift more than the giver? That is exactly right. And that is what I came to that day. The Lord the Lord was inviting me in to a new a new I don't want to say level because it's not climbing a ladder, but a a new facet mm-hmm. of of our relationship that he wanted yeah. us to have together. Yeah. And it was this, mm. do was I going to serve God because of the good gifts that he mm. gives me? Or was I going to serve God because he is good and he loves me? Okay, say that one more time. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard to get it out, but that is so good. It's such a good reminder for us. It's, up until that point, I mm-hmm. literally didn't know it, but I had been serving God because of the good gifts that you, that, that I wanted him to give me, right. whether it was this easy life mm-hmm. or whether it was heaven. Mm. Yeah. I, I wanted the good gifts and that was my motivation. Mm-hmm. And God was saying, I love you. Mm-hmm. Right. I want you to love me. Mm. That's, that's mm. what I want. Wow. And and that day, I relinquished yeah. the the old equation. Wow! And walked out of that room a different, different, different yeah. woman. Mm. Yeah, I love that, Jamie. Thank you for sharing with. I I think that's an incredible moment. It, it's a vulnerable mm-hmm. moment for you to share with us. But we do. We all have those moments we where do. we mm-hmm. surrender. Yeah, and that that is beautiful. Well, we have. We need to we have We need them. to surrender. We need to have them. Yeah. yeah. So three years, you're three years into this. <laughs> yes. And we finally had a procedure, mm-hmm. a surgery mm-hmm. that gave us an answer. And backing up a little bit, we had, we had kind of decided, our prayer had begun as, do you not want us to have children? Mm-hmm. Do you want us to have biological children? Mm. Do you want us to adopt children? Okay. You know, mm. And we had both really, after all this, we kind of came to the to peace with, I think God does want us to have children, but we don't know yet how, how mm-hmm. they're to come. And so um, we began filling out forms for adoption mm-hmm. and Pursuing. driving to Dallas every, so in, every few weeks to wow. um, see the specialist mm-hmm. there. And... Um, so he told us he wanted to do this test, it, this surgery, and um, he said, "I think this is gonna. I think this has a good chance of working. Mm-hmm. And if it, even if it doesn't, it'll tell us w- more yeah. about what's wrong because okay. they never could figure out why mm-hmm. we weren't getting pregnant. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so we, we just kept be- started praying to the Lord. You know, Lord, let this be your answer. Mm-hmm. We're so tired. We're so yeah. weary. Yeah, please." Please give us this answer. Mm-hmm. And so when we had we woke up from the surgery and the doctor said, Well, we know now mm-hmm. what's going on. We know why you haven't. All these times that we've thought you were having eggs, mm-hmm. you weren't. Yeah. And um you were having cysts. Wow. And um so uh, he says, there's a chance there were two eggs there. Mm. This time. So maybe you're going to get pregnant this month. But okay. if not, um, you probably, we could do another major surgery. And then you might have a 50% chance. Yeah. But um, otherwise, it's really more, it's probably about one in a million oh, if I- you ever get pregnant I just imagine I can only imagine how difficult it would be for you to hear those words when you're already like you said weary and tired and like uh, well to, to me you would that, think it would be but we had we we sincerely surrendered mm. this time we were really saying whatever you want you know that if it's adoption that's great if it's biology mm-hmm. that's great we just want to do what you want mm. 
Which is a whole lot different. So when you surrendered, than how we started. It, then you came into it with a different strength, right? And and somehow there was a there was a part, you know, of sadness that 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 last time, mm-hmm. you know, when he said we might be, we did yeah. end up pregnant. But um, but more than anything, we were rejoicing because we we had an, an answer. answer. We had yeah. an answer. We knew where God mm-hmm. wanted us to go. That's sweet. And it wasn't long mm. until. Um, Michael was in our home, mm. little baby Michael. What year um, was that? That was 1986. Okay, 1986. And um, and then uh, when two years later, Morgan came to our home. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to tell you, there was nothing like it. Yeah. I mean, to I wondered if we would feel an immediate bond. You walk in that room and, and it's like, you're not even walking across the room. You're transported. You're immediately oh. there to say, oh, this, this is, is my, my baby, mm-hmm. you know. And I, w- I would have died for either mm-hmm. one of them from the yeah. moment I yeah. saw them, you know. Mm-hmm. And so. And at that point, I imagine you're thinking, God, you are good. <laughs> like, I mean, you yes, know, the, yes. his goodness has come through the hard days oh. and the good days. Oh. But like you have this tangible yes. thing that you're holding yes. that is God's representing God's oh, goodness. It fulfilled everything every desire Mm. of my heart and I just remember thanking God over and over thank you that you did not let me get pregnant wow you know I I went it was a such a transition from Mm -hmm. why are we having to go through all of this right to then thanking and then thanking him that he closed my womb that I could not because at that time they weren't letting people adopt children if they unless had you to. proved you couldn't get pregnant. Wow. And so, so you would not have had Michael and Morgan in your home no. if God had answered your prayer the way you thought he should answer <laughs> or if the equation had worked out the way you thought exactly, it should Exactly. Exactly. And I thank him mm. to this day. Wow. They have been incredible blessings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us about a time when you were journaling after you found, oh, that's, I'm oh, skipping way far ahead. Well, I'm that's so okay. sorry. That's okay. In 1989. Yeah. Well, we were married seven years when okay. Morgan came into okay. our home. So, okay. And then um, a, eight months later, we moved to the hills. Okay. From Abilene. From Abilene. So in 1989, we moved there. Okay. And... Um, had a almost three year old and an eight month old. Okay. Okay. And um, I remember sitting right up on the slope <laughs> one day. Uh, Isn't it watching, sweet that we're sitting in this room know, as you're telling the story? It is. And watching a little mom and her baby wrestle down in uh-huh. the front of the auditorium and thinking, I had a, at this point, I had a six and a half year old and a four year old. Okay. For those of you that are moms, you know what that means. That means they all can go to the bathroom by themselves and they can uh, buckle their seatbelt. And that exactly is a right. huge deal. Yes, it is incredible. And um, I just, re- I was kind of feeling sorry for her, you know, because <laughs> it was just one of those days where nothing was going to make the baby happy, you know. And I was like, oh, Lord, I loved those days. But right. I'm so I'm really thankful we're at the stage we're at. I'm really enjoying this, you know. <laughs> and then about a week later, <laughs> I was I was just feeling rotten. And I knew <laughs> that I would have to take a pregnancy test. Mm-hmm. Now, you had, in the interim, we had started having home pregnancy tests. You know, right. But I knew the, the doctor would make me take one. Right. So that I could assure him I wasn't pregnant. So you, you could know? get some medication to feel better? Yes. Is that what you were I was thinking? Just, yeah. Oh, I felt so terrible. And um, so... So I was, you know, t- ripping it apart, thinking, I wonder how much money I wasted on these all these years, you know, and this is ridiculous, you know, and I take the test and all of a sudden I look down and it's like, <laughs> I can't believe this. And I, I ran and called the hotline on the back of the box because I was like, I think something's wrong because I can't be pregnant. And I, wait, 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 wait. You called the hotline before you called Rick? <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, it was. I mean, I just. So when you it was called the Rick, you could say, I've minds. already called the hotline. Yes. They assure yes. me. <laughs> Not only did I call the hotline, I called the uh, OBGYN. <laughs> I, was like, I think there's something wrong with that test. <laughs> <laughs> oh my and goodness, so, what is going on in uh, your heart and your mind oh once you're like, well, of course we were thrilled. We were t- 
totally. It's a miracle. Yeah. But the first thing I wrote in my journal mm. was, Lord, mm. thank you so much. Yeah. That Morgan and Michael yeah. are in my home. Yeah. Yeah. I just, every gift is a, a precious mm -hmm. gift from God. Yeah. Every, every baby is a precious Absolutely. gift from God. Absolutely. But I'm so thankful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For his time. Gave you a gave you a gratitude moment yes. for Michael and Morgan. And then it's yes. I mean, it's just so sweet to yeah. think that the Lord knew your whole story mm -hmm. and he was orchestrating things to so that you would have an open home yeah. for Michael and yes. Morgan. And then he's still like, yes. at the, you've already surrendered. God, you're good if you do. You're good if you, you're good right. if I get pregnant. You're good if I don't. That's exactly right. right? That's right. And mm. we had been married 12 years wow. when Matthew was born. God's plans are so much better than anything mm. we could plan for ourselves, yeah. right? That's right. Oh, my That's goodness. Right. So, Jamie, how would you say that relationships are different today <laughs> because of God's faithfulness? Well, I think walking through this season... Help me make the decision. Mm -hmm. You know, God is good mm -hmm. and he is worthy of my everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I made the decision. I won't ever question that no matter what hard times come along. Mm -hmm. I'm never changing. I'm never calling that into question again. Yeah. I will interpret my circumstances by what I know of God mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. interpreting God oh. by the circumstances. Wow. That's good. That is so, so yeah. good. He is good and he is worthy of everything, Jamie. Yeah. I just think that's incredibly encouraging to people, whether they're going through a season of infertility mm. or they're going through a different wilderness moment. Right. Um, whether you're waiting to be married, right. whether you're looking for a new job, mm -hmm. whether, whether you're a single mom or, or a season of illness. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Um, so did God change your heart? He did. He really did. And um, and he has continued to change it. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had lots of seasons of difficulty since then. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm that's right. how life is. This is Everybody right. has se seasons of difficulty. And Jesus told us that he we told us to expect it. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I can remember. I can remember a time that a specialist told me I had cancer. And I was wow. going to have to have a surgery to remove wow. it. And a person that I, a very dedicated Christian came up and was trying to reassure me and, mm -hmm. you know, said, we've been praying and I know that God, God is good and he's going to heal you from mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And, and I, because of what I walked through with mm -hmm. the infertility, because of the, what God taught me then, I said, I am so thankful for your prayers, but you need to understand God is good whether yeah. I have cancer or not. Right, right. And and that is mm. that is an anchor that you can hold on yeah. to. Absolutely. Through anything. Through anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, whether it's whether it's how long a season has gone on, mm -hmm. I look back and go, No, your timing is perfect, God. Right. If you had t if if I, you had been on my timing, I wouldn't have these kids. Right. And I, I wouldn't have Michael and Morgan in my home at all. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have the specific person Matthew is. Mm -hmm. Because each each month, there was a possibility of a different person. Right. Not the one Absolutely. who was born 12 years mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. um, and most of us are pretty good at looking back on a season mm -hmm. and... Um, Looking back on a season and going, oh, yeah, God right. was right. I see what he was doing. Hindsight. Now. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think it's it it is much more helpful when you can encounter a difficult circumstance, one that you don't understand what he's doing or mm -hmm. why this is happening or why it's going on so long. Before you get to the end of it, if you mm -hmm. can look back and say. OK, I don't understand it, but. You did this for me right, right. in the past, yeah. and I'm going to trust. I'm mm -hmm. deciding right now before I see, I'm going to trust right. that you're going to look 
you're going to do it again for me. Right. That's why you and I talk regularly about the importance of holy history. Yes. Because when you can think back on God's faithfulness mm -hmm. and then you look into a different season and a different mm -hmm. difficulty, mm -hmm. you're reminded of God's character, right. not the season. Right. The season's still there, That's but you're right. reminded That's of right. God's character. Well, it's like any good relationship. You know, you, you, uh, start a relationship and you don't know each other, mm -hmm. you know, all that well, even, even with marriage, yeah. you know, when Rick and I were first married, that was a hard time for us because every, th every time he'd do something that I didn't understand or that mm -hmm. hurt my feelings, you know, mm -hmm. instead of going, I, he is a good man. You know, right. This, I would freak out and be like, Oh, this is the person that I married, you know, I mean, <laughs> forever. Oh no. <laughs> For 40 you know? years. Yeah. And you know, Rick kept trying to explain, you know, this is, that is really hurtful. Yeah. You know, we have a mm -hmm. history with each other mm -hmm. and the same way I have a history with God. Mm -hmm. You have a history of God. Yeah. All of y'all have a history of God. And some of your history is, is very short, mm -hmm. right? But it's, as long as we stay walking mm -hmm. with him, as long as we don't say, get out here, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. He's going to be building that history. Right. And each new difficulty, each mm -hmm. new circumstance that you don't understand, he's wanting you to say, I know what you've done. I know yeah. who you are. Yep. And I'm going to interpret this circumstance based on what I know about you. Yeah. That's that's a heart change. It is. And and I think that's And it's what, a better way to live. I'll tell you that there's a, a lot more joy. It's a in better that. way to live. And I think that's the part of walking with Jesus. Is yes. he's continuing to make our heart yeah. look more like his, whether it's in marriage or whether it's in a wilderness season mm -hmm. or whether it's in, you know, a, a really difficult time or a great time. Right. He's making our heart look more like his. Yeah. And I just wanted for a moment. Like, I'm just thinking through what you said about, you know, being young and being married. And <laughs> for all of our women out there who are either newly married or just a few years in, I'm, I've been married 25 years. You've been married 40 years. Mm -hmm. It takes work, but it is the sweetest thing to get to uh, a place where you recognize, I know the best about Rick. I know the best about Ryan mm -hmm. and I'm going to assume the best about Ryan yes. and I want him to do that, you know, for me too. That's right. And it, it, you don't, it doesn't just happen overnight. It just doesn't happen when you say I do. It is building this relationship right. and that's, that's our relationship with the Lord too. That's exactly right. Yeah. Jamie, tell us, is there a scripture or a worship song that has been the most meaningful or helpful to you in your well, story? Yes. Now, when it was happening, I think Peace Like a River, mm. you know, uh, not the I Got Peace Like a River, oh. but um, <laughs> you can sing it for us yeah. if you want. I mean, I'm not going to miss that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> but where where it says, whatever my lot, mm. you have taught me to say, oh, yes, it is well, it is well with my soul. Yeah. And um, so that was back when we were doing the infertility stuff. But in later seasons, something like um Blessed be your name. Mm. Blessed be your name by Tree Sixty Three. Dawn, help us out Looking in the for comments. A link there, a little link help, <laughs> where he talks about you know, blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your mm. name. Yes. Blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering, mm. when there's pain in the offering. Mm. Blessed be your name. Mm. Um, another yeah. is even if you don't, by Mercy Me, mm -hmm. where they talk about I. The chorus, I think, says, I know you're able and I know you can mm. save through the fire with your mighty hand. But even if you don't, yeah, my hope is you alone. Mm. I know the sorrow and I know the hurt would go. I'll, I'll go away if you just said the word. Yeah. But even if you don't, my hope is you alone. Yeah. You've been faithful. You've been good all my days. Mm. Jesus, I'll cling to you. Come mm. what may. Yeah. Uh. And then. Trust in You by Lauren Daigle. Jamie's got a playlist, I know, you guys. I'm sorry. No, I'm it's sorry. good. I'm like, but, we need a summer playlist. You've got now homework, extra homework, create a summer playlist you know with some of these songs. should send in songs for everybody. Yes. We could have a playlist. Yes. But when Lauren Daigle and Trust in You says, when you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. Mm. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. Mm -hmm. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you, I will trust. Mm -hmm. I will trust. Mm. I will trust mm. in you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, 
we really cannot live without scripture and worship no, music. We, we really can't. can't. All right. And I've got a scripture Kay. for us. Yay. And this is going to be on your artistic scripture sheet. Thank you, Amy Center. Amy, you're awesome. Exodus 33, verses 13 through 17. Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. That's not even it. That's something I'm not saying because we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm 73, verses 25 through 26. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything mm. on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. Mm -hmm. He's mine forever. I just want to reemphasize mm. before we go, God loves you, mm -hmm. and He wants you to love Him. Don't follow God for mm -hmm. what He can give you, but because of who He is, He's worthy. That's right. So I'd say that's the takeaway, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He yeah. is worthy He is because worthy. of who He is. Right. That's right. Jamie, let me pray over you, and then we're just going to um, give our women some final thoughts before we, you know. Thank you. Before we say goodbye for the summer, that's a song, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask you to sing it. Let me pray. Oh, right? Okay. Thank you. Oh, Father God, thank you so much for the reminder of your holiness and of your faithfulness as we, as we have listened to Jamie's story. Lord, you've been there every day. You've been there every moment. Um, just patiently loving her. Mm -hmm. and reminding her of, of her worth and her value. And that comes from being your daughter. Lord, thank you so much for the way that you have blessed Rick and Jamie uh, with the family that you blessed them with, mm -hmm. the perfect, the perfect family. Lord, you knew the hearts and the souls that you were gonna put in their home. And so we are thankful for that and we give you all glory and honor. Lord, thank you so much for the way that, that Jamie supports Rick in his ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, the way that she loves people, the way that she loves women, and the way that she wants every person to know that there's not an equation. It's just that we belong to you. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we love you and we trust you, and we're just honored to be your hands and feet. It's in your sweet name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Mm, so sweet. This has been such a great series. It has been. Way I've more than I could minute. have expected or imagined, right? Yep. Yeah, and I love I it. I think God is going to do powerful things with the stories you've heard. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do powerful things with the stories you're living. Right. And so we're counting on hearing back from you. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. want you to be telling other people right. the so, story of him. Story of him. And, and that's going to come from you sitting in your quiet time with him and sifting through these scriptures from the series mm -hmm. and spending that time connecting with God. But then also we have a challenge for you. We want you to share your story with somebody. Yes. Maybe it's your sister. Maybe it's your girlfriends. Maybe it's a coworker or a neighbor. Mm -hmm. This summer, the assignment you have is to share your story with somebody in the mindset that when you share your story, you're also sharing about God and who That's he right. is. You're not bragging on yourself. You're bragging on God. Right. That's right. So. so we love you guys. We cannot wait. We'll, we'll let you know what's next when we know what's next. <laughs> but we love you and we hope you have a happy Tuesday. Bye, guys. God bless you.